Hello friends, Nintendo. Well, I did not expect that. I have to be honest here. I thought that it is a relic of the past. That yes, this company was huge in the 80s and maybe 90s, but right now they lost against PlayStation and Xbox. It's game over. But I was wrong. I was very wrong. The first thing that blew my mind was the list of 10 best-selling game consoles of all time. In the top 10, we have five Nintendo consoles, including second, third, and fourth place. And if we look at the current platforms, Nintendo Switch is an absolute leader. Then they have intellectual property related income, like movies, TV shows and merchandising. And there is another huge business for Nintendo. And I really mean huge. Pokemon brand, which Nintendo owns a substantial part of, is the biggest franchise in the world with a total revenue of over $92.1 billion. Marvel Cinematic Universe is over three times smaller than Pokemon. So let's see, can anything else surprise us about this company? If you were to invest $1,000 into Nintendo 10 years ago, you could buy around 87 shares. And now they would be worth something close to $4,718. And they also pay dividends. So in that time you would get $757 as dividends. So if we add together the current value of shares and the dividends, we get $5,475. And that is a gain of 447% in 10 years. Not bad. Not bad at all. Individual insiders, that is an X. 0% of the company is owned by individual insiders. So the management does not have its skin in the game. And are individual insiders buying? That is of course an X. In the last year, we did not see any transactions. And do super investors own this company? That is a check. There is one super investor owning shares of Nintendo, and that is Steven Romick. And it makes up 1.41% of his portfolio. Of course, there can be more super investors that own this stock, but if they bought shares of Nintendo on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, we don't really have a way to discover such investments. And is Steven Romick buying right now? That is an X. In the last quarter, he did not make any changes to this position. But actually, Steven Romick bought the shares of Nintendo in Q2 2022 and added to this position a number of times over the years, just not in the last quarter. Return on invested capital, that is a check at 10.7% 10-year median returns, and we want to see this number higher than 10%, so that is decent. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is a check at 29.3%, and the industry average is around 10%. Nintendo has one of the highest margins in the gaming industry. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is a check in the last 10 years, they bought back 1.7% of their shares. And the debt? It is a check, Nintendo does not have any debt. But not only that, they also have a decent amount of cash lying around. 9.9% billion dollars to be specific. Well, it's checks all around. That does not happen very often. Revenue growth. That is a check at 10.7% compound annual growth rate. And we would like to see this number higher than 10%, so a nice growth. Free cash flow growth. 
that is also a check at 22.9%, so even more impressive. And earnings per share growth, that is another check at 28.7%. I have to say, I did not expect the financial health to be that good, but I definitely did not expect Nintendo to be growing at such an impressive pace. That is exceptional. The dividend yield is 2.6%, so shareholders can expect to get $1.40 annually per every share. And the payout ratio? That is a check at 50%. So as dividend investors, we get half of the earnings, but the other half stays in the company and can be used to grow it. And speaking of growth, what do we know about dividend growth? It is a check at 13.9% five-year growth rate. But we do have to take into consideration that it is not a stable dividend. It is changing a lot depending on the results of the company. So such growth can be a little bit misleading because we should not expect the dividend to continue in such a trajectory. Price to earnings ratio is 20. That is not low, but not very high either. There is a chance that Nintendo is fairly priced right now. But to find out is this really the case, let's find its intrinsic value using a discounted cash flow formula. First, let's estimate the growth of Nintendo for the next 10 years. So in the lowest scenario, we will estimate a growth of 10% for the first five years and then 8%. In the medium, 13% and then 11%, and in the high scenario, 15% and then 13% growth. So the low scenario is below the predicted growth of the gaming market, which is around 13.1% per year. Medium is showing a scenario in which Nintendo will grow with the global market, and the high one is predicting that it will slightly outperform its competitors. So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $63, in the medium $76, and in the high scenario, $87. But we should always apply a margin of safety to those prices. I use a 30% one, but you can use any margin that makes you feel comfortable. And with such a margin, we get in the low scenario $44, in the medium $53, and in the high one $60. And the current price is around $52. Just as price-to-earnings ratio suggested, Nintendo seems fairly valued at the moment, or even a little bit better than fairly valued. If we open our Stock Ranking Pro, to which you can get access by becoming a Patreon, and sort it by the overall score of the company, we see that Nintendo is the 12th strongest company in our ranking currently. That is a very nice result. And now let's open the company overview. And we can very clearly see that investors are the only weak point in this graph. We prefer to see either more engagement from insiders or from super investors. But unfortunately, it is not the case with Nintendo. But then again, Financial health, growth, and dividends are much, much better than I expected. So what is the bear case for Nintendo? Well, the first problem I see is pretty obvious. Nintendo faces stiff competition from other gaming platforms like Sony's PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox. Also, the Switch, while very successful, is aging. If Nintendo does not release a new console or a significant upgrade to the Switch pretty soon, it might lose its momentum. They are also not very diversified when it comes to games. Nintendo heavily relies on its first-party games like Mario and Zelda. If those titles lose popularity or fail to resonate with new generations, it could become a huge problem. 
And what is the bull case? Well, Nintendo has announced that the successor to the Switch will be revealed by April 2025. So far, we don't know a lot about it, but if the new system will be backwards compatible, they can maintain the strong position in the gaming market or even expand it. Nintendo has also two segments that so far are not really used to their full potential. One is mobile gaming, and the other segment is enhancing Nintendo Switch Online and other online services that can improve player experience and retention. At the moment, Sony and Microsoft are way ahead, but uh, that can change. Especially that Nintendo has a very interesting position on the market. It is very rare to buy both PlayStation and Xbox, but it is quite normal to have one of those consoles and also a Nintendo Switch. Why? Because Nintendo created a great niche for themselves. They create family-friendly casual games and great party games. So even if Sony and Microsoft are doing great, it does not mean that there is no place for Nintendo. And looking at our valuation, it is possible that we are getting a great company at a fair price. If you enjoyed this video, then you may find my analysis of Microsoft or Apple interesting. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.